Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to Melbourne's Festival Hall where a huge crowd has gathered to see what promises to be a night of exceptional kickboxing. The action's going to come to you thick and fast. We've got a heavy program lined up culminating with the USA heavyweight title. Between Australian Stan Longanides and all the way from the United States of America, Charlie, Mr. C. Archie. It looks like being a great night of action. My co-commentator for the night, Bob Jones. Bob, what do you think of Stan Longanides? Stan Longanides has got a big chance for a world title. This is a big stepping stone for him. He's had uh, 12 fights in the last 16 months, but tonight is against number three in the world. So taking Charlie Siachi out gives him a chance at the world champion early next year. Well, it's going to be a good one. We're certainly going to see some great action, as we said. Also with us, Richard Norton, who will be joining us in the commentary position throughout the evening. What about Charlie C. Archie? Charlie C. Archie, what a look. Huh? I wouldn't fight him just looking at him. Looks but, tough, uh, doesn't he? Charlie's had a lot of experience. He had 489 amateur boxing bouts. He's, uh, he's ranked number three in the world, as you just mentioned, and he's also number one heavyweight contender in the United States. He's fought some good people. He's fought Maurice Smith, Don Wilson. He had a devastating knockout of John the Train Hackleman who many thought was going to be the next heavyweight champion of the world. He's a walk-up fighter, he'll take the fight right to you, and he's known probably to have the most devastating body punches in the sport. So it'll be a tough one. An eight-round event coming up next, the WKA Australian Super Middleweight title to be decided between Mick Marshall fighting from the red corner, and he's up against James Edwards out of the blue corner. This is a super middleweight Australian title Second fight, eight two minute rounds. Mick Marshall's a very seasoned fighter, but he's been unlucky in his three last starts. Uh, been very controversial decisions where his trainers felt he won the fights, but uh, he lost on points. But that's the name of the game. But uh, there's been some controversy over his last two to three losses. Well, it'd be very important for him to put a decisive score on the board tonight, then. Oh, definitely. He won't want to lose four in a row. He'll start to lose ratings totally. And He's having trouble getting back on his main cards. Comes from a nice distance with those leg kicks. Comes from right outside. He's doing a lot of work with the legs. Of course, now we're coming back to super middle. This is usually a reverse sport to boxing. Usually the smaller guys are much more exciting than the heavyweights because of the leg work. Uh, it, it comes, in fact, the best fighters are the Thai boxers that only weigh up to uh, like 45 kilos. So that's, that's where this sport is really exciting. But um, the heavyweights did a very good job. But as you can see, there's a lot more speed, a lot more finesse, a lot more techniques being used by these super middleweights. Well, I'm inclined to think that's the way it is with traditional boxing too. You know, you, you, your lighter fighters give you so much more pace and, uh, and their evasive actions are so much better. Sure, when you look at, say, Sugar Ray Leonard compared to Muhammad Ali, yeah. And here we've got the same thing happening. I'm not too sure about the boy from Brisbane. Richard, do you know much about the young boy from Brisbane? Not a lot. He's been training four years in kickboxing. Um, his record is 16-3-1. He's had 15 kickboxing matches and five boxing matches. So he's not without experience, that's for sure. Well, as I said, Mick Marshall's a very seasoned fighter. And he's had uh, 13 or 14 fights. I'm not sure. 13 or 14 fights. He's just had bad luck in his last three outs. The, they feel the judges... Ooh, a nice whip kick to the head by Mick. Luckily yeah. missing. <laughs> Parting the hair. Not much, not, not, Mick's not putting much power into the, into the lead kicks. I feel that's a problem of his. He doesn't lunge in when he kicks. He kicks from a stationary position. So he's losing at least 40% power. He's not cutting the angle off. If you don't move the forward front, if you don't move the forward foot, Ken, you'll notice that it's a 180 degree. He's got the left foot on the floor. He kicks with the right leg. It's 180 degrees to get to the opponent. If he steps across with the left leg, he cuts that back to about 100 degrees. So the kick's much more powerful. Right. There we have round one, Ken. Okay, the end nice of try. round one. How did you see it, Bob? Uh, well, it's a bit hard. They're foxing one another out and both doing a lot. But I, I wouldn't say either fighter outscored the other. I'd say we had a 20-20 decision there. Well, just about ready for uh, round two. It's an eight-round event, as we told you. And uh, a good way to go for these boxers yet. Mick Marshall is the kind of fighter that usually takes his pace, sets himself up, and he puts the pressure on every round. So it'd be interesting if he follows that format or if Queensland allow him to follow that format tonight. Because the young kid from Queensland's here to have a go too, for sure. Yeah, he's obviously come to fight and he's in very good shape. Now, Mick stepping nice up. Dave, Dave Hitchcock kick. must have got into Mick Marshall. He's stepping up on that, lead, on that lead kick now. He's cutting that angle across. That's what gives the kick so much more power, is just stepping across to your opponent's back leg. Another nice switch round to the body. He's got the wheeze. Yeah, I think Dave Hitchcock, uh, the, the trainer of Mick Marshall, has uh, fixed that job up. As we said, the silent champions, the ones that do the work between yeah. the rounds can turn the fight around and of course Dave Hitchcock is our, uh, Dave Hitchcock is our uh, most represented trainer in the country. Yeah, not a nice scoring round to death. So Mick Marshall's trainer is sitting has developed more Australian champions than any other trainer in the country. And Mick Marshall's one of his protégés. 
So it'll be interesting to see, but these young kids from Queensland have certainly got some nice combinations from hand to foot. Very nice. But obviously you're going to difference from the heavyweight is the mobility they're using, and that's the idea is not to stay in there too long and pop too many of those leg kicks. Because these lighter guys, you see they're really stamping that forward foot up, that gives that kick as much power as the heavyweights have got. If the heavyweights fighting flat footed, which they were before. Now it must be pretty important too to take a toll with that kick because uh, constant kicking's got to be fairly draining on you, surely. You know? oh, it's a lot harder than yeah. you're using, Yeah, you're using such a large muscle group that it, it just wears you out. That's why a lot of, uh, even though there might be good kickers in the school, you don't see a, a lot of high kicking in these matches because uh, obviously they want to conserve energy. Yeah. And uh, it takes a very talented kicker to continually kick to the head, you know, over a series of rounds. We've got the corner man here in the United States this evening in the main event is Peter Cunningham. He's the Australian, uh, the world, sorry, the world super lightweight champion. And he just Ooh. kicks everywhere all the time. As an example, he was a bit light. But look at this fight picking up. Nice exchange of punches. Both fighters yeah. really going for it. This is WKA rule, so the fighters are only allowed to kick outside the leg. They're not allowed to kick inside, so the referee will be on that if it happens. But you'll see how that leg kick outside sets up the hands, Ken. That's the does. idea of the sport. And at the end of round two, six rounds to go in this very important Australian super, mate, super middleweight title bout. All right, we're back to the action as the boxers come back into centre ring with Mick Hanafy ready to start them on round three. Oh, a nice combination from Mick Marshall. Yeah, as I said, uh, with Dave Hitchcock in the corner, I think he's more experienced than... Uh, or has developed more champions than the Queensland trainers. It'll be very interesting. There's a lot of business going on between the rounds here, between the two trainers, competing with knowledge to uh, get their fighters to turn around and get the fight in their advantage. Ooh. Oh, right hand. Good right up there. Right hand score from Mick, looked like, uh, Mick Marshall appears to be giving away a bit of weight this fight to him. And on the scales, they were very close, but the young boy from Brisbane's put on a bit of weight since the weigh-in this morning. And appears to have a couple of kilos of advantage on Mick Marshall, but uh, may not be the case as the fight progresses. Certainly no advantage at the moment. Mick Marshall scoring very well, and so this round so far is going Mick Marshall. He's got the cleaner scoring. It's like that front kick he picked him up there. Very poised, Marshall, isn't he? Yes, he's thinking. He's got one problem, Mick Marshall. He's got a temper, and uh, he's easy to upset. A lot of fighters play on that strategy. But as he gets more experienced and he learns to control his temper, he's going to be a good fighter in the future. He's a keen fighter. As I said, I don't know much about the Queensland boy, but Mick Marshall is a fighter, and he'll keep coming back no matter what. As I said, he's had three losses in a row, but he's back here again going for it again tonight. So he def definitely needs a win tonight. Yeah. But James Edwards, a uh, young, good-looking surfing kid from Queensland, with a look at him, he's certainly here to put up the best he can. Oh, nice combination, oh, man. Heavy the leg kick and double punch. Leg kick with the double punch. He's weaving nice, too. Come in with the hooks there. Oh, another nice couple of hooks. Very cool fighter, though, Mick, isn't he? I'm, like just, I, I'm just watching the trainer, man. <laughs> They're fighting now. Yeah. <laughs> the two Hitchcocks. Hitchcock Senior and Hitchcock Junior doing more than the fighter right at the moment. <laughs> Ooh, nice round. Nice well, there we go. Nice End of round three. Plenty of action in that one, Richard. That's for sure. I think Mick Scorn was a nice combination then. It's a very combination set up. That leg kick followed in with a nice punch combination. Stans, of course, uh, won a lot of his fights setting it up with that, with that low round uh, leg kick coming in with a left hook. Well, coming up to uh, the halfway. Round four. That's it, Ken. There's four more rounds to go. We're exactly halfway. So it'll be interesting to see now if the fight turns or if both fighters keep taking up to one another. Oh, nice and left round kick from Mick Marshall. James Edwards is hanging in there, isn't he? He's yeah. getting point for point. Notice Mick, though, fighting very smart using those ropes and using yeah. that front leg while leaning on the ropes. Conserves a bit of energy and it's very deceptive. Yes, he looks to be a little more canny fighter than Edwards. Yep. That's why you notice a lot of the fighters, the first thing they do is they check, th check those ropes. They want to see how much slack they have, how much they can lean on yep. them, and again, use that to their advantage. Plus, there was a bit of a problem with the floor today, which the fighters were complaining because we don't wear boots like boxers, we fight barefoot. And uh, some of the fighters were complaining about uh, the floor being uh, yeah. not really smooth, yeah, which affects us more. Big Marshall coming oh. in now with some heavy combinations. James Edwards going to get the count. And his corner going, crooked Marshall. Should have gotten in there and killed him, I said. He 
He's all right. He's ready to go with it. Attacks. Well, I think he's in a lot of trouble now. Getting yeah. hit with uppercuts and hooks. Another standing eight count. Well, a kid in a spot of bother at this stage. I hear the referee telling uh, the Brisbane fighter one more chance. So if he doesn't recover now and get on top, he'll start to defend himself. Well, he's coming back strong he's coming now. Back he's strong. in there. Oh, oh, he's he's got got two stuff from him. McMarshall going right in for it now. Uppercuts, hooks. Well, giving him everything he's got. McMarshall really plowing into the boy from Queensland. Sent back to the corner again. Once again, Hanafi puts the count on. Mick Hanafi doing the right thing, of course. The, the ultimate thing is to look after the fighters. He's a, he's a young fighter. He's got a long way to go. And the bell time again. <laughs> That's the way it goes, but it gives Edwards the time to sit down at the end of round four. Well, the referee, I feel, is decisive. I always, I always like to go for safety because... Uh, well, we have a replay coming up. Yes, some of that uh, action coming up. It's fast and furious. Nick Marshall's really taking control of the fight now. Both fighters swamping. James Edwards will be really feeling some of those shots. They're coming in very strong. Yeah, boy, he's really taking some punishment there, as we can see. Nick but Marshall's got away with a couple of inside leg kicks there, but the referee hasn't picked it up, so uh, I guess that's his advantage. But a couple of those inside legs, there's another one there. That inside leg kicking is illegal, but uh, the referee has... He yeah, copped two of those, actually, in that yeah. round. It's very hard, of course, for the fighters. They're trained to do both, and suddenly they're excluded from doing one out of reflex. That was the problem, yeah. Mm. They're, they're in the training, the boys are using Ken, these elbows as well. Yeah. Oh, so here we go. Okay, the round five. They're back in action, and uh, the boy from Queensland now, James Edwards, with the job in front of him. Nick Marshall looking pretty good. See how they fare. As I was saying, Ken, a lot of the guys, when they train, and particularly in my classes, we always emphasize using the elbows and the knees. Yeah. So uh, prior to a fight, it depends how quick you cut those extra weapons out. Sometimes the fighters stay on those programs too long, and that's why you'll see an inside kick just get slipped in. Tend to slip one in, and uh, there's a reflex action more than anything else. That's right. Yeah. Well, we just hope the elbows. I noticed, I think round two, Mick Marshall almost let a, a, an elbow go, but uh, he pulled it up just before it set sail. He's looking too strong in this round as well, isn't he? He's, he's yeah. all up in control. I think he's, uh, he's really taking control. Is the punishment starting to tell on the, on the young Queenslander. Marshall's experience, obviously, working for him. He's bowing, scoring in there relentlessly. And well, the, problem, yeah, the problem is now the Brisbane boy is quiet. Nick Marshall now can sacrifice that front leg. He can take those kicks from the Brisbane boy now to score with her overhand right hand. So it's a, a weird technique there. We actually let the fighter kick you so that you can jam on the kick and get your strong right hand off. Which does more damage than the kick because the fighter's tight. If that makes sense. Oh, I'm another good. nice left hook from Nick Marshall. And again. And a right. And a oh, nice leg kick. Ah, there we go. That's all. Back to the corner. He's declared it over. That's it. Well, there we go. It didn't go the distance. Nick Marshall obviously very pleased with the result of that. As uh, Bob had told us, he's lost the last three. Needed to win that one. And uh, coming out from the red corner in the third consecutive win to the red corner too. As Mick Marshall takes it in five against James Edwards. Nice fight, nice fight from James. Young fighter, he's got a lot good future in front of him. Yeah, I think uh, just the experience there, Mick Marshall is also, he's been really tuned up to the uh, three point of the loss. But look at no stopping Mick Marshall now. He needed that win. Yep. I think it'll be a long time before we see Mick Marshall lose again. I think so too. Well, let's have a look at the... Oh, there's Slow that left action. hook coming in. Uh, there's the reason the referee stopped it. Nick Marshall right on top here. It's a rather pointless letting the fight keep going. Letting a young guy from Queensland get hurt. No point whatsoever. Even though I think the crowd's a bit disappointed. And there's a kick. Takes the legs out from under him and that's it. Good night. Oh, that right hand would have done damage. Mick, 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 he was just about to let that right hand go. They would have done damage. So a great performance there from uh, Mick Marshall from the red corner to take the WKA Australian Super Middleweight title in five rounds from James Edwards of Queensland. Eight rounds of action coming up next as Tony Torquezio in the red corner versus Wolf Hablitzel from the blue corner for the WKA Australian Middleweight title. Well, the competitors ready for the WKA Australian Middleweight title.
Eight two-minute rounds to be decided. Wolfhub Blitzel in the dark blue shorts from Western Australia is fighting out of the blue corner. And in the red corner, Tony Tocasio in pale blue shorts. Tony on screen now, 25 years of age, five foot seven, very well put together, five foot seven, I might tell you. Ten wins and two losses he's had. Dave Hedgecock is in charge of this round. We have a new referee for this bout. And uh, they're just about ready to get underway. And certainly, uh, Bob, Tony Tocasio, a, a very strong and solid-looking customer when compared with Wolf. I would say Tony Tocasio is probably one of the healthiest men in Australia. He takes um, his Ashley products and he's just got all the amino acids and everything that your body needs. In fact, he says that he, he recovers from any bruises within 24 hours. No matter what he gets done to his legs, they regroup within 24 hours. Whoa, they're oh. off and running. He almost ran into a front kick was the only problem. <laughs> Holy Toledo, did he come out of there in a hurry? Well, Wolf must be wondering what he's up against right now. He's lucky Wolf didn't jump out of the way. Tony would have been straight <laughs> yeah, door. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it was a strategy. He's probably tried to psych Wolf out on that one. Well, it worked against me. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, Wolf is normally a super middleweight. Had to come down to middleweight for this with only two weeks' notice on this fight. Yeah, without getting too confusing, Tony uh, was supposed to fight uh, another fighter from New South Wales who got an injury, and Wolf's taking this fight at short notice and also had to drop a lot of weight. As, as you're saying, Richard, to make the weight division, to keep Tony having a fight, otherwise Tony would have missed out. We had to get Wolf inside the weight division to make it a title fight. A take, Just a slip. Uh, I think it was more of a slip. Of a leg kick. Well, Tony's certainly going at the job like a bull at a gate, isn't he? He's very excited, Ken. He's had two attempts before. He fought Steve Daly in Perth, and prior to that he fought uh, for the Australian title. He's had two mishaps, so tonight he's real keen to this. is his third attempt at an Australian title fight, and he's so keen to be an Australian champion. He's just living the sport right now. Bit of a low kick came in then from uh, Tony. Well, Wolf from uh, Western Australia does have a height advantage over Tony as well. Coming up in another weight division, he's got the height as well. But as we say, sometimes in kickboxing, that's not such a big advantage as a small man can get inside with the leg kicks. That's for sure. Look at Benny the Jet if he there. You can tell you about that. <laughs> Just for the audience, uh, Richard Norton made comment of Benny Urquidez, and uh, he had 83 fights, uh, no losses. And I think it was uh, 69 knockouts. Wow. Talking about Benny Urquidez there, the world champion. An impressive record as we see the end of round one of this WKA Australian middleweight title bout. Okay, they're back into action round two. Tony Tocasio comes out a little slower. It certainly gets into the action straight away. The Wolf's back into it again. Taking advantage of long legs. Really trying to score off and keep Tony away. And, of course, Tony's got to get inside because of the height disadvantage. He's got to get inside. Nice overhand right there from Tony. He uses that nice fake off the front leg coming in with that overhand right. Both fighters are pretty equal knowledge in the way of leg kicks too. They're both coming from AKA into WKA. Yeah, that's right. Now, you'll find AKA is phasing out. I'd send another six months. AKA will practically phase out in Australia. And uh, the WKA is becoming more important. But also in 1990, we expect TCB to come in very popular. It's fighting from Bangkok, Thailand, fighting with Thai rules. So that's uh, another kickboxing style coming into Australia next year. But tonight we have WKA, and as you say, Richard, the transition now with the outside leg kick, it does make it interesting. You get a 50-50 style of fighting. Oh, nice leg kick then from Tony off the right leg. And once again, there's no need to count the kicks this evening. Normally we have a kick count with an MKR minimum kick requirement of eight rounds, but it's not necessary with these caliber fighters, as you can see. Both scoring 15, 20 kicks around. So there's no need to count to make sure they're doing eight. Once again, Ken, as you can see before already, the welts starting to come up on the inside and outside of the legs. Occasionally they go for the out leg, but miss it and catch the inside of the opposite leg. Yeah, the referee won't pick up for that, uh, Ken. Obviously not intentional. No. Same thing just happened then. So in the checking process, they often lift the, the forward leg when it's checking, as I said, using the shin like an elbow to protect yep. the punch. If they lift the knee too high, then the, the kick goes underneath and takes the support leg. Right. So it's an interesting mix. You've got to pick the knee up to check with your shin, but not lift too high. But that's the name of the game, like uh, it's just like doing a golf show. Certainly. It's all technique. You've got to do it right, yeah. And that's where... Uh, you, Oh, Wolf is missed with a kick down, almost slipped. Both fighters pretty keen to score in this round. Well, second of eight, of course, that it is. 
And uh, there goes the bell to conclude the second round. Tony Tocasio against Wolf Abletour from Western Australia. Okay, commencement of round three. Called into the ring by Dave Hedgecock. And straight into the action. Out through the ropes. It's a WWF move. <laughs> mixed up with the WKA or the WWF. <laughs> Wolf also using that fake left front kick, following up the straight right hand. I don't think Wolf was impressed by getting bundled out there. He's coming, coming out a little angry. Yeah, coming back very strong. Wolf was trained uh, in Western Australia by Mark Jones, but the last month he's been uh, getting trained by Rod Stroud, who's come over for the trip from Western Australia as the trainer for Wolf Hath Blitzen. And uh, Rod Stroud would have the second most amount of champions to Dave Hitchcock. So we've got two very famous trainers here this evening in uh, Dave Hitchcock and Rod Stroud. As I said, Rolf's, uh, Rod Stroud is in the corner of Wolf Hasplitzel from Perth. Tony Tocosio was trained by Paul Fifield. And Paul Fifield's notoriety in kickboxing Ken was in 1983. He beat the USA champion, Mark Costello, and became uh, the Pacific uh, Pacific middleweight champion. That's the trainer of Tony, 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 Tony Tocasio, Paul Firefield. He put us on the map. He was the first Australian fighter to really beat an international standard fighter. It's just about to say, Bob, we've obviously got some very well-credentialed Australian kickboxers. Oh, we've been going 13 years now, but uh, we weren't getting experience. But I think the last couple of years, a lot of fighters have elevated up now. And we'll see with Stan tonight anyway. It's the big match. Stan Longin, he's from Australia, fighting Charlie C. H. Archie for the USA title. And as I said, Paul Firefield was the first one to win against the USA champion in 1983. So we're hoping Stan can pull it off again later tonight. Yes, it'd be great to see. But his action now with Tony Tocasio and Wolfhard Blitzer. A couple of techniques went wrong there. <laughs> They're slightly messed up. Once again, that's the excitement of Tony Tocasio wanting this title so bad. And uh, we're getting hit with a couple of more trouble, yes. Wolf's been training at the uh, gym I have at my house over the last couple of days, and he's real keen to win as well. Well, at the end of that round, we saw Tony Tocasio almost walking into a spot of bother. He'd be glad of the respite at the end of the round. Whiplash Wolf in the other corner. They come out now, ready to start round four. Tony's still trying to work inside. Tony's very strong tonight, isn't he? Very strong. I feel uh, he's giving away a little bit of weight, giving away a lot of height, but uh, he's coming on very strong. He, as I said, he wants this title. Here's a frustration technique. I don't like that technique at all. It's a very dangerous one, the spinning back fist. It wins a lot of fights, but... Uh... Trouble is, instead of hitting with the glove, you often end up hitting with a forearm, which uh, can be quite brutal. Referee warning the fighters to break when he gives them the command to. Dave Hitchcock's a very experienced referee. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice straight left from Tony Tocasio. And brought right to the nose. Again started off with that powerful round uh, right leg kick followed up then with that hook. Tony looks like he's very fit for this fight. He's got everything fine, both feet and both hands. All four weapons are working well for Tony Tocasio tonight. He's almost getting this packed house at Festival Hall on their feet with every technique. Wolf's still saying plenty of powerful techniques. His leg kicks are good and strong, and he's using that fake front kick. Great punch combination well. He's taken a lot of damage to the legs, though. His legs are starting to feel it. I was about to say, Bob, the, the kicks of Tony must be starting to tell on him, surely. He's, yeah. uh, he's caught plenty around those thighs. Well, I can hear the trainer. Rod Stroud calling out to get his angles and get his footwork going, but he's getting normal flat footed, which means his legs are getting hurt. And his face is getting hurt, so Tony's coming very strong to this fight and looks like he's taking total control. Yes, and with the stress uh, comes uh, the lack of cohesion that you need, as we see at the end of that round, and uh, certainly a pretty good one for Tony Tocasio. Okay, back in the action, the start of round five. Tony Tocasio and Wolf Blitzel in the dark blue shorts from Western Australia. 
Tejo still kicking high and frequently. Taking it right up to the taller Wolves. One of the reasons they use those high front kicks is often to uh, sort of set the person backwards to set them up for a leg kick. You know, it obviously puts their weight off that front leg. Another thing, Richard, with Wolf, he's been very extensive on uh, Muay Thai training using the Bangkok rules over the last three months. So he's been training with elbows and knees, and uh, he's had to take those extra four weapons out tonight. So it could be causing a little bit of confusion for him. Makes a big difference, as you say, when you do so much from reflex, suddenly you're not allowed to use those weapons if you train so hard to use. Yes, if you've got to stop and think about what you're going to throw, it makes it that much harder, doesn't it? Just slows down that reaction time. We have a team going in, Ken, in uh, February. There's about 25 of our fighters going over to Thailand to fight, and Wolfgang Blitzer is on the team. So uh, he's probably a bit disappointed not having to pull four weapons back. not allowed to use his elbows or his knees. But uh, under these rules, Tony Torcasio has taken beautiful control. Tony with some nice body shots then on Wolf. He's saying a score at Will now. Wolf, Wolf looking tired. Wolf's got that great straight left though, he scores well with that, using that fake front kick. Well in the flurry of action before, I actually thought that Tony was scoring the Kingston on a slow motion rerun, you saw that Wolf's punches were much sharper, much cleaner. And once again, the reason Tony's in a hit is he's still dropping his hands a lot on those kicks. Wolf's using that to advantage with that straight left. He's going to come in with that knee rise uh, to get him in, he's still using his hands a bit low, yeah? And there we are, the bell for the end of round five as a bloodied Wolf of Blitzel returns to the blue corner from Western Australia, Tony Tocasio retires to the red. Here we are, back in action, round six. Pretty exciting right here at the end of this fight too. Oh, there's still two rounds to go, but uh, we've got plenty of action coming here from Tony Tocasio and Wolfhack Blitzu. This action coming to you from Festival Hall in Melbourne, a packed Festival Hall. And Tony getting pretty cocky now, inviting him in for the action. Not a good thing to do, as I said, I still like that straight left from Wolf. <laughs> Gotta be careful of that one. Yeah, if he walks into one full on, he could have trouble. Good straight punch. But I think Wolf's also getting a little bit tired and a little bit sore, just looking at his footwork. Yeah, he's favouring that leg a little bit, and you can see from the welts on, he's got good reason to. Tony working on it again. Tony's just taking advantage on all the breaks, isn't he? He's just letting that leg kick go as, as they break. And just getting that little bit more pain embedded into his opponent. Yes, a little more pain is just what he doesn't need right at the moment. Wolf's getting very tired. Obviously having taken off that extra weight that starting maybe to what it was. Uh, he spent a couple of hours sitting in the sauna at my house this morning and uh, that may be taking its toll. Spending two hours in the sauna since 7 o'clock this morning. He made the weight, but uh, that might be... Might be affecting his performance a little bit here, but you can't take it away from Tony Tocasio. He's been fighting for a long time, wanted this title, and really going for it. He's right fighting man. beautiful as well. Maybe very nice looking punches there. That's the sort of lift you don't need to run into when you're feeling like Wolf at the moment. That's when the fighters have to be really keen on those leg checkers when they break from those clinches. They get caught with them every time. You notice Tony scores well with that. Well, there we go. The end of round six and uh, certainly a couple of fierce rounds yet to come in this exciting bout. And part of the very interested crowd here as we come in for the start of round seven in this WKA Australian middleweight title bout. Tony started right off opening the round up with a roundhouse shot to the thigh and a front kick. Taking command of this round again. Wolf of Blitzel trying hard to turn the tables. Be interesting to see what Rod Stroud's told him to do between that last round. And again, if that works. Wolf looking quite tired at this stage, but still throwing.
he's tired, Richard, but he's still scoring actually some clean shots. I just don't know how much power is in him now with the amount of tiredness that's coming over him. See, he's scoring the roundhouse yeah. kick there and the right hand shot at the same time. Nice, yeah. And again, right and kick, again. right punch. It's amazing how deceptive those relaxed leg kicks are. They can have a lot more hurt than someone who's trying sure. to put a lot of effort into them. They don't look much, but they're the ones you still feel three days later. You've been training a bit yourself with Benny Urquidez lately in the States, yeah? Yeah, training a lot with Benny and with Pete Cunningham. And uh, Chuck Norris, too. Chuck's uh, getting ready to do a movie in February. Well, well, we'll talk about that a bit later on. Oh, great. Are you doing any films yourself coming up? Sure, you've just finished a film, actually, haven't you? Just finished one. Well, we'll sure. be up on that later, too, eh? Yep. Back to the fight now. Boys are getting a bit of WWF going again. Tony Tocasio has been introducing that quite a bit this fight. I think Tony's condition might sort of start to tell a little bit on Wolf. At the... He's very conditioned, isn't he? I mean, it's been a hard fight. This has been a war zone fight all the way. Oh, that was a nice round. And it's a heavy Left fight. Hand. Both fighters coming back. Plenty of instructions coming from the corner as uh, Wolf was hanging over it. But, uh... Tony keeping laying on him, keeping the pressure on him. He knows he's tired. But... Certainly having to hold Tony up is not going to help him much. Oops. Okay, the end of another good one, and certainly Tony Picasso looking pretty good. And as we said, Wolf looking tired as we get toward the end of that round. As Bob said earlier, Wolf tired, but still scoring well with those punches. Second time. Oh, the Don't forget the Work, 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 work. Work, work, work. The instructions for Tony Picasso. They've trained Tony hard. It's the last round, and they just won requirement work 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 and don't so, try and crowd him was the instructions as we heard them to Wolf the Blitzel. Wolf's instructions were to jump around and use leg kicks but Tony's not exactly giving him that <laughs> chance <laughs> no, he's wasting his time using that side kick a lot of the karate kicks don't work in kickboxing Ken so we found a side kick is very rarely used which is a, a karate kick. And why is that, Bob? Uh, it's just too telegraphic, when the boys, especially when the boys get tired. It yep. takes an extra pivot, uh, it's a 180 degree pivot on the supporting foot. There's a hip rollover and the fighters can see it coming. You know it's coming and you're out of the way. Yeah. You're covered up. Yep. So they use the more precise kicks. In fact, most times they just use the round kick and the front, what we call a front push kick. Yep. As a, as a defensive move. The main aggression kicks, you'll notice 70% of the time when they're kicking, is the round kick to the thigh. But once they learn to check that, then you've got to take it higher. If a fighter's a good checker, you don't like clashing with his shin, so you've got to go higher than the knee and try and catch the body. And have to be prepared to expend more energy to do it. That's it. Both fighters very tight in the closing end of this eighth round, but hanging on desperately trying to get the points. I'd say Tony's got the points. So uh, Wolf should be doing a lot more. He's come a long way. He's flown 4,000 miles. He should be just putting his life effort in his last 20 yeah, seconds. Yeah, he should be throwing more rather than hanging on as much as he is. But I guess the poor man's just that tight. It's easy Very to say that's sitting out here. <laughs> Still scoring in though with a combination. He's, he's been scoring clean. I don't know how much the judges are going to have a problem with that. He's been scoring clean, but Tony's been stronger. So, Well, I think Tony's done enough. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. He's, he's, well, Wolf's just that tired, but uh, I think that shows a lot of how Wolf feels at the moment. Poured himself into the ground. A great performance from him. The crowd appreciating it. They're Wonderful. going wild here as we get toward the end of it. Wonderful effort from both fighters. Tony Tukash is a very popular local fighter. He's got the best crowd reaction so far this evening. The crowd wants Tony to win, so now we'll see what happens. Tony Tukashio and Wolf Hapluchu. For the WKA Australian middleweight titles, eight rounds, and we'll have the winner for you in just a moment. The new Australian middleweight champion, trained by Paul Feifel, Tony Tocasio. Australian middleweight title. The Wolf certainly has nothing to be ashamed of. Wolf of Witzel putting up a great and valiant effort, but Tony Tocasio, well and truly, the new Australian middleweight title holder, as well he deserves to be, a superb performance, he gets hoisted shoulder high, and the crowd pretty happy with the result. What a beauty this will be.
the Greek team will be fighting out of the red corner. And they're fighting the Turkish team from the blue corner in our big team event coming up next. Well, now we're underway with the uh, team event, the Greeks versus the Turks. Now, the Greeks are fighting in the blue colours, the Turks in the red and white. And, uh, Bob, I think we might get you to explain just what happens in a team event. This is semi-contact, Ken, as we've been watching all night so far, it's full contact. There's one rule in this style of fighting, there should be no intention to want to hurt the opponent. So it's a much more technical expertise style of fighting, where they actually go for the multiple, axe kicks, side kicks, spinning kicks, dump downs, everything's included. And it's fast and furious action. But what the referee is looking for then is technique, not, uh, not hitting power. That's it. So you get to see a lot more traditional Taekwondo, Karate type moves from the traditional martial arts training. As you said, pretty quick. Con Andrianopoulos is the referee for the, the team event. So uh, the Turks do battle with the Greeks. Con's a fourth man black belt. He's been training for about 18 or 19 years. I haven't seen much of him in the last few years, but he's come out of retirement to referee tonight. And um, the Turkish team's a very young team. They all look to be like 16, 17, 18 years old. The Greek boy's not much older. It's another reason we got rid of these foot pads in full contact, Ken. You see the problem they have with the straps and keeping them on? Yeah. Plus, wearing the short pants uh, with these rubber boots on, they look like Daffy Duck. So we've eliminated, <laughs> that's why we've noticed tonight the fighters have been wearing ankle supports and shorts. But there we have round one on the teams event. So what do we do now is we look inside for the flags. So again, that's one point to the Greeks. Wow. Two, two judges went neutral. And now we have the change of competitors. This is the second round. This is a five-round fight. Uh, we have different competitors every round. There are five members on the team. We draw the flags after each round of fighting. And so far, after round one, the Greeks are one point with the Turks yet to score. There are three judges with the flags. This is the second round starting off now. Oh, nice kicking combination. See the, the spinning, spinning crescent kick? Trying for a takedown. So you see the fighters here, Ken, they can yeah. use takedowns, they can use sweeps, they can use throws. There's a double roll, roundhouse kick. Some real flash stuff going on here. So uh, any young karate guys watching this show will appreciate the technique here that they're learning in their karate studios. <laughs> sort of like karate kid stuff from the movies. But nevertheless, it's good, fast action. The idea is not to hurt one another, it's to outpoint one another with the flasher techniques of the martial arts. Greek boy's a little bit and overweight. Not too sure he made the team carry now. That's right. <laughs> Probably uh, eating at a Greek restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been up to Ligon Street, yeah. And the Turkish boy's very young in this fight. He looks about 16 years old, but he's a black belt. And he's got some nice fancy stuff. There's the end of round two. Just waiting for the flags now. We have two flags to the Turks and one to the Greek. So that makes the scores two each now. The scores are two each. And the audience is not very happy with that decision. <laughs> but the cheering is for a new round score that's just taken the highlight of the show. I wonder why. <laughs> Probably because he's wearing the Turkish colours, I guess. <laughs> uh, she's got the best reaction of the night. He's round three. <laughs> this will be a good round. I know Tony Gallia here used to be a good full contact fighter, now fighting semi contact. That's on the Greek team, Tony Gallia, with another young competitor on the Turkish team. Beautiful legs on the Turkish team. Richard, they're really getting the spins, aren't they? They certainly are. Wonderful height in these kicks. See the difference, Ken, with the amount of spins and the amount of heights. See, sure. going for the head all the time. Trying to impress the judges with the flash yeah. of techniques. Nice axe kick coming down there.
You notice the referee then calling a point, Ken. Oh, that's a penalty point. The only points he calls in this fight is when they hit one another too hard. If it adds up to five penalty points in the round, they get disqualified. Okay. He could give five points straight away and disqualify if he wanted to. That's his option. But they usually come in with two or three points. And the fighter knows he's got up to five. He better slow down and stop hitting. Some of them don't care. They just keep hitting anyway. <laughs> Especially with this uh, the ethnic situation here where you've got the Lebanese and the Turks fighting. Well, the action uh, so the Greeks. Fast and furious, isn't it? Boy, keep it going. <laughs> We have two ties. This will be interesting. We'll tell how many ethnics are in the audience now. Because the Turks have taken a one-point lead. Scoring one point that fight and two draws. So the total score now is three to two. With the Turkish team taking the advantage against the Greek team. And you can start to get a feel of how many Greeks and how many Turks are in the audience by the flags as they get called. It sounds like there's a lot of Greeks here this evening. Another thing, Ken, is they usually match the teams during these fights that the better fighters come later. Right. So it builds to a climax to what we call full forward. The first fight are the half-backs. The jammers, sorry. The next fight was the half-back. Then we saw the sentiment. These two are the half-forwards. The next fight will be the full forwards. That's how the team gets called up. So we're looking at the half-forwards right now. Nice combination kicking from both these boys. Well, we'll see uh, the Turkish member now is, uh, has Taekwondo written a button across his back, which means he's a Korean Taekwondo stylist who will have exceptionally good legs. He's loading he's up there with some nice kicks as well. <laughs> nice dump down by the Greek fighter. Nice takedown. That might take him the points, because the takedowns do carry good points. A drop sweep by the Turk. Attempted, ended up getting one on the side of the face for his trouble. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Down he goes again. Gonna get sick of this. <laughs> Greek boy's got those takedowns down nice. I think the audience is happy because the Greek looks like he's gonna take this. We'll see how many flags shortly. Because they are down one point on the yeah. team's total at the moment. There's the round. Having a look at the judges here. We've oh, got yes. one, two, three, the Greeks. Three flags to the big team. Nice takedown, that round. So we're coming in now with a two-point lead to the Greeks. They were one down, but they got three flags that, that round, which now makes it 5-3. The Greeks are two points in front. Coming into the final fight, these are the full forwards, the most exciting fighters on the team. Boy, they started to keep up with after the last one. Well, that was only the half forwards, Ken. You can bet this will go three times fast because this is the full forwards. I know both these fighters. They're very experienced at this style of fighting, and this will be one hell of a fast fight. Take my word for it, and I'm predicting now. It's coming up in 10 seconds, 5 seconds. Here's the last fifth and final round between the two full forwards. George Consta starting off a little bit slow. The Greek, I thought he would have put more effort into his speed. He must have a strategy he's using. He normally comes out much faster. Nice left leg round kick from the, uh, from the uh, Turkish team. The Turkish fighter is an ex Australian full contact fighter. Uh, four or five years ago, he had an Australian title in full contact fighting. He maybe has some personal problems or work commitments or something. He can't train for full contact. But he's enjoying the semi contact. This is a bit of fun. As I said earlier, the desire is not to hurt one another. That's the only rule. They're not supposed to try and hurt one another. It's a bit of fun, but the Greeks are enjoying this now. They are have a two-point lead. So George better not take it easy. Because the Turk could get three flags and pull a decision here. If he gets three, the Turks will win. Khan having his hand full, keeping in the middle of this action. <laughs> <laughs> Time out, he says. Oh, boy. The state referee for this style of fighting is uh, Santo Almeida, a six-stand. He's a lot smaller than Connie. He has a lot more trouble controlling the fighters, but uh, he must have been otherwise committed not being here this evening. Con Adianopoulos is filling in, doing a good job. But the state referee for semi-contact is Santo Almeida, who's not here this evening. This will be very interesting. The Greeks are down two points. The Turk desperately trying to get the three flags this round. The Turks have got one, so they're going to win it. We've got one Greek, one Turk, and one Thai. 
So it winds up 6-4. The scores are the same. The Greeks have won by two points, six points to the Turkish team, four points. One more, they say. One more. Six points to four, goes to the Neos Cosmos Boys. Well, the announcement being made that the Greek boys have won, six to four. And mainly due to a half forward. Coming up next, the WKA Australian light heavyweight title. Over eight rounds, Tassus Petridis and the red corner doing battle against Trevor McTaggart, fighting from the blue corner. Coming down, Tassus Petridis! Tassus Petridis. The masked assassin, Trevor McTaggart. Trevor McTaggart in the year. White Bonner. And Tassus Petridis there, as we've seen, staring down. The masked assassin, Trevor McTaggart. As they get ready for the next event on the program, the WKA Australian Light Heavyweight title. Again, over eight two-minute rounds. Tassus Petridis wearing red and black shorts. They're going to be fighting out of the blue corner. I beg your pardon, out of the red corner. Out of the blue corner is Trevor McTaggart wearing yellow shorts. There's a lineup of Trevor McTaggart, 27 years of age. 173 pounds with a big boy, 79 kilograms, had 12 wins and two losses, and is the number three contender in Queens in Australia and the Queensland champion. Trevor McTaggart looking in great shape. He Certainly always, does look very fit, doesn't he? He always comes up in good shape, yeah. He's known for having great stamina. Coming up next, the WKA Australian light heavyweight title. Over eight rounds, Tassus Petridis and the red corner doing battle against Trevor McTaggart, fighting from the blue corner. Ooh, nice hard kicks coming in. Oh, nice right. Nice right hand from Tassus. Mixing it up very early. Both fighters going well with those punches. This is a serious fight, isn't it? Mm. Certainly no time to sort one another out. They're straight down to business. High kick. Pass is going well that time. He's giving McTaggart to cover up. Interesting thing, Ken, is uh, as an amateur, Stan Longanese's only loss was to Tassus Petridis. Tassus Petridis actually beat Stan Longanese when they were both amateur fighters. But you can see Stan has uh, outclassed everybody tonight, getting yeah. ready for the fight that he's got coming up, which is the next fight on the card. But this is what I've mentioned here, that uh, Tassus Petridis has been out quite a few years fighting as well. Certainly a very determined looking young man at the moment. Probably got the better of the packet so far, I'd suggest. I would say so, yeah. Tassel is very much in control at the moment in the early stages of this round. I think Ken, you were saying earlier the Red Corner's had a lot of wins. I don't think Queensland's done that well tonight because they're still using karate kicks or taekwondo kicks. There's no lunging. They're not using that Asian system of standing right. near the front foot. 
and all of the balls out of this corner from Queensland, they haven't been doing that. And that could have had a large bearing on why the red corner is having so many wins tonight. That's yeah, it's a good point, Bob. If they spot their mistakes, and uh, that's simply a matter of training for it, improving that strength in those kicks. Well, a very vigorous opening round as we get to the end of round one in the WKA Australian Light Heavyweight title between Passis Paridas and Trevor McDagger. Let's take a look at some of the action again from the opening oh, round. I see a nice right round kick following that straight. This is a serious fight, isn't it, Richard? I mean, they're both Certainly scoring is. clean and powerful. All McTaggart could do is cover up then with that barrage from Tassas. Tassas has certainly improved in uh, taking full command of this first round, I'd say. Possibly a 2018 round, if not a, definitely a 2019 round. Well, there he is, Tassas Petridis. Getting his instructions. Mouth guard going back in. And we've got seven rounds to go, so uh, there's a lot of things can happen in yep. this fight yet. I'm disappointed they're not using the thigh kicks because uh, it's keeping that AKA yeah, system going that we're hoping to eliminate shortly. I would have liked to have seen these boys using leg kicks. Yeah. This is good internationally, Ken, is full contact karate. This, right. this action is full contact karate. That's by having to kick above the waist. Yes. But Taker scores well with that front kick. Yeah, but it hasn't got much power, Richard, because he's not using that system what you guys are using in LA now. He's not stamping in with the kick. He's just doing it from a stationary position, so he's losing a lot of power. Also, he should be following up. That's the whole idea of that push front kick, is to give you the distance to come in with either a leg kick or at least a hand follow-up. Yeah. That's another fault with the Brisbane boys. I feel they've been fighting very single unit tonight. They haven't been... They're putting combinations Tassas together. Tassas and Tony Tocasio, they're putting three, you know, six, seven, eight combinations together out of Paul Fifield's corner. So Paul Fifield at the moment is looking like a very good trainer on tonight's performance. All his fighters have had uh, multiple combinations. Where the Brisbane boys have still been a little bit uh, flat-footed and also just using single shots. See, Tass has got that distance down now. Trevor's having trouble scoring on Tass's Petridis because he's got so much command of the distance, bridging the gap. It's going to be interesting as this fight progress conditioning-wise, because I know the target is in very good shape. Um, it's going to, obviously, that has a lot to do with the outcomes. He's a little bit like Mick Marshall, Richard. Uh, we were talking earlier about Mick Marshall starting off a little bit slow and always warming as he goes. A bit like Benny Urquid is, which you'd know more about than me. Benny was also a very slow starter, and as the rounds progressed, he got more and more dangerous. Right. And Trevor McTaggart will do that. You'll watch if this fight goes, and if, if, if uh, Tassus Petrudis doesn't keep control, Trevor will come stronger Gradually as the rounds come progress. Over. And this rushing act of uh, McTaggart's too seems to upset Petridis a little bit. Oh, it can be taken aback a little by it. It can upset any fighter. It really just offsets your balance, your whole game plan if somebody keeps cramping you and coming in on you. Tuss is doing a good job, of course, at it at the moment. Paul Fife of the trainer has got a technique Richard looking at him there. He's being very relaxed during the round, whereas the other, the other trainers tend to yell, scream and get the blood pressure up. Paul's very relaxed. But the fighters just do their job. And the end of round two in this uh, very important bout and uh, certainly an interesting one at this early stage. Okay, they're back, ready for round three. Straight in with the kicks. Starting to get animated too, so starting to get in with the feeling of it. Petridis rather very much into this one. Yeah, it's interesting to say before that Tassis Petridis had beaten Stan Longinides, but uh, no matter how good Tassis is looking in this fight, he hasn't hit the standard that uh, Stan the Man has hit the last 16 months in, in America. So uh, we should see an elevation in fighting again for the last USA title fight coming on straight after this one. Yes, everybody waiting for that, and it should be a beauty. Meantime, we've got a pretty good game on our hands right now. Well, audience-wise, Ken, I'm glad we've had some wars here this evening because uh, San Longinides in the United States over the last 12 months has had, over the last 16 months, has had 12 fights. The last nine of them, he wins by knockout. So uh, Stan hasn't fought longer than one or two rounds for his last nine wins. Well, that's amazing. So uh, if he can pull that off again tonight, which we certainly hope he does, um, it's just as well we've had this, uh, this war, war zone on the prelims. Yes, well, we've only had, uh, what, one or two that have finished inside the distance? The entire card, so it's certainly been some great action. 
Well, both that middleweight and super middleweight. Super middleweight with Mick Marshall and middleweight with Tony Tocasio were both war zone fights. This lacks a little bit of the zest because uh, they can't kick low. If you can see the difference in the style of fighting, a little bit more punching. Uh, not coming. Oh, nice combination. Ooh, there's a combination coming again. Just as I said, they're not coming as, as much as before. Making me out a liar. But uh, I like the more complete styles of fighting, so I'm missing the leg kicks a bit here. Yep. Well, there we go, and that one is the end of round three as McTaggart and Petridis return to their corners. Yes, you haven't got a, as much complete action, have you, while the, uh, the leg kicking's out. Very, no. Very noticeable. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what's... Here's, uh, here's some action. McTaggart's going well with right and left punches. Uh, that's Tassus. Tassus, uh, yeah. I beg your pardon. He's got pretty much control of this fight so far. We've just hit halfway through. He could turn around, but I'd say the judges' points would be going to Tassus Petridis so far. Certainly in my book, anyway. Yes, three good opening rounds from him, with the fourth one coming up in this eight-round event. The WKA Australian Light Heavyweight title. Tassus Petridis on your screen now. All set and ready to get back into the action. Can't wait to get going. And McTaggart not shirking the issue either. He's up and ready to rock. Called into the center of the ring by McHanafy. Tassus immediately attacks. You hear the crowd earlier chanting Tosca, Tosca, which is for Tassus Petridis. He's a very well-known young man around moment. He works in the security field. And uh, he's one of the good guys. We've been hearing a lot of bad reports about bouncers lately, but Tassus works at Billboard Nightclub and some of the other clubs around town. And uh, he's a perfect gentleman when he's working in security. And good to see. And you can see that with the popularity of him here tonight with the whole crowd cheering for him. We'll be unnerving for the Brisbane boy because uh, they've travelled a long way to fight and uh, they've got the whole crowd virtually against him. It was going well then with the it's actually a side kick he used on that one. Yeah, it's interesting with the AKA how uh, they fight from further away so the side kicks will work but they don't work in WKA. So there are different rules and it makes different techniques work. Yeah. Right. One slightly low there from Tassus. Taggart not troubled by it. Oh, he's troubled by that. He made a mistake there and it uh, wore the punishment for it. Tassus well, kicking wild, that's unusual. That's a wild kick from Tassus Petridis. It doesn't happen often. You see, they've drifted back now, Ken, to what we call karate kicking, and uh, with the full contact, it doesn't have a lot of effect. Yep. They've, they've settled down now to just kick it from where they're standing. They're, they're not using the stamp, and uh, the punches are doing much more damage than what the kicks are. Certainly. Whereas earlier, you saw that the kicks were doing the damage. Yes, it's almost being thrown in as a formality, isn't it? Yeah. So that's where it loses a little bit of zest. But uh, nevertheless, it's a very good fight. Taggart's been trying to pick Petridis off with that left, but uh, Petridis got that just the edge and reach on him and being able to keep him away a little. Sure did. Again the left, as we come to the end of round four. Well, McTaggart looking in the corner there, looking at... Uh, a little bit the worst for wear. He's, yeah, he's, he's starting to feel a bit of the effects of those, uh, especially those head punches. Oh, as we cross to the dressing room now, there's Charlie C. Archie, who's here to, to fight in the main bout for tonight. All set and ready to go. Mean looking customer, isn't he? And he's the man that is going to be up against Stan the Man Longanides. Charlie C. Archie in the dressing room. I think Charlie might be worn out wearing that chain by the time he starts to fight. Yeah, he would. Won't want to fly up and hit him in the face, he'll be in a whole bunch of trouble. <laughs> and we've just had a new face join us at, uh, at ringside. And, uh, maybe you'd like to do the introduction, Richard. Yep, we have with us now Mr. Pete Cunningham. Sugarfoot is from the USA. He's a five-time world champion. He's going to help us with a commentary on the rest of this fight. Pete, nice to have you along. What have you thought of the stand of the fighting tonight? I think uh, the show's looking great. The place is packed. And uh, 
I love it. Uh, all these people came out here this evening to, uh, to watch your boys. Uh, mainly to watch uh, Stand the Man Longer Needles, the main event of the evening. But we seem to be having a bit of a main event right here. We sure do. Tasso's really coming in heavy yes. now, controlling this fight. Looking very good. Heavy head punches coming in. Up the top. Take it signing the best way is to hold on and that little I, I think he might have gotten somewhat aware of the fact that uh, the Taggart was looking a bit more and he's decided to go for it. I think so. Still trying to take the fight for score with a spinning back kick then. We were just commenting before, Petey, about the difference between, say, the more traditional karate style kicking as opposed to the Thai style kicking. You know, they're a lot more effective, of course, with the Thai style as far as impact value goes, rather than sort of the token effect of just throwing the kicks out. You got it. What, uh, what you'll see is a lot of the fighters do a lot of boxing training and uh, token kicks are thrown. Uh, this evening, uh, these boys seem to be putting their kicks and their punches together. So you're seeing uh, good karate techniques, maybe a little bit more, uh, a little too much, I should say, karate kicking. Exactly. Uh, but uh, exactly. Uh, this fight looks pretty good, and uh, the main event for sure, we see uh, solid kicks, uh, you know, as used in uh, Thai boxing. Right. More of a mixture, I should say. More of Very a mixture. Very flamboyant kicks. Oh, there you go, there's a nice uh, jump front kick. Very flamboyant kicks, uh, as well as effective, and, uh, you know, hard-hitting uh, leg kicking. Well, Taggart, McTaggart's certainly been getting the rough end of the stick here from uh, Tassus, but uh, just coming back, he's... the words being spoke, spoken there. Let's take a look at the... Okay. And as we move away from that round, we'll see if we can get into the dressing room of Stan Longanides as he gets ready. There we go. Here's Stan in preparation for the big bout tonight, the big one, the USA heavyweight title. Ten two-minute rounds coming up, and that's Stan the Man Longanides getting rubbed down and ready to do battle with Charlie, Mr. C. Archie. And what's going to be a, a big one, I feel quite sure. Definitely a big one. Petey, of course, has been very instrumental in getting Stan ready for this fight at the Jet Center, and he's out here specifically to be in Stan's corner. To be with him, yes. I, um, I work with Stan in the States, and uh, what can I say, you guys? You know what he's done? Stands the first Australian to have traveled to the U.S. and won a U.S. title, and moreover won a North American title, both Canada and the U.S. And uh, Stan has come home now and fought a couple of times uh, since the beginning of this year in his hometown, and uh, he's here to defend his title against Archie right, on his way to uh, a world title. Well, it's good hopefully with Dennis Alexia. Okay, we're back with the action of round six now, and this uh, all-important WKA Australian light heavyweight title, two to go. And uh, Tassus Petridis, I would suggest, is looking pretty comfortable at this stage. But boy, I don't think he can afford to take it easy against Trevor McTaggart. I'd say Tassus has a bit of an edge, but uh, the opponent, uh, his, uh, his partner here, is skiing with him. It's a close fight. Yeah, he's certainly still in. He's got good conditioning, McTaggart, thank goodness. Peter, are you surprised to see the amount of support for kickboxing in Australia? Actually, um, the first time I came here, uh, it was a smaller venue, yet a packed house, a uh, full house. And I'm seeing the same thing this evening with this uh, you know, much larger venue. And not really surprised. Uh, the promoters, Chris Cronus and uh, Nick Kinos, these guys have worked overtime to uh, put this show together. And uh, they really got the people uh, you know, beefed up behind this. They certainly have. And uh, it must all go well for the success of the sport in Australia. There's no doubt about that. And obviously, we've got some pretty good prospects coming up, too. Uh, that's what I'm watching. That's what I'm seeing here in the, uh, in the talent. Uh, a change from when I came back, when I came here uh, for the first time with Stan, early this year, end of March, uh, early uh, April. Uh, Stan himself and a couple of the other guys have had an opportunity to travel to the States and do some training at the Jet Center, uh, Ben Yurkidis' Jet Center in Van Nuys, and uh, it's showing here. And as time goes on, you'll see, you know, of course, the guys have become uh, better and better, more comfortable with the new uh, techniques and the new uh, skills that they're picking up. And it's looking good. And Petey, we hear a whisper, you might be back here in March to uh, fight All right, that's what the Australian crowd. Oh, yeah, they're looking for me to come back here and defend my... Uh, Junior welterweight title, and uh, I'd love that. Yeah, so to give me a crowd like this, I'd love it. <laughs> well, we're in the going moments of round six of this one right now, and the last yeah. ten seconds, and there's certainly plenty of leather being swapped out there, still. Class is still scoring well with those punches. Uh, pretty clean. This fight's going pretty clean so far. Excellent. And they go to their respective corners at the end of round six. Two to go. 
Petey, who can we expect maybe to see you fight when you do come back in March? Okay, there's talk of Ronnie Green uh, of London. There's talk of, uh, oh, geez, uh, let's just say Cliff Thomas. Cliff Thomas. States. So um, I'll leave that up to, uh, to my management, uh, theirs, and uh, the promoters here. You know, anyone, anyone that can find in the top ten or, or the top two or three in the world, I'm looking forward to uh, defending my title. Oh, okay. great. You're, you're five times world champion. How long have All you been in the sport? I tell you what, I've been uh, champion now for four years, from lightweight to uh, super lightweight to junior welter. And uh, what can I say? If I can do it for another four or 40, that'd be great. <laughs> hey, Pete was also a number one contender for the Can uh, Canadian lightweight boxing title. Yes, I've done some boxing, professional yeah. boxing, as well as amateur. So it's quite a background Certainly in the fight game. Incredible performance. It's certainly great to have you here in the country. Ah, thank you. Several times Canadian grand champion, uh, points karate. So we've covered the whole gambit. You know it. That's, it. That's where we all start from. I started from most kickboxing. Well, here we go now. Round seven is Trevor McTaggart and Tassus Petridis still do battle. Petridis, of course, in the red and black shorts, and McTaggart in the gold. Petridis had the best of it so far, but just popped a beautiful yeah, right. Nice right. On the chin. And followed up with the left. Taggart is definitely still in there in the fight. Yeah, once again, conditioning plays so much of that, whether a person's got that staying power in the final uh, parts of the, the fight. Uh, it goes hand in hand. Some guys can be excellent. I mean, excellent technicians, you know, great skills and the whole bit, but without the conditioning, that only lasts for so long. Exactly. So you, you know, you better pre take the guy out, but that's not a way to go in there. If you go in there, go in uh, with a full, uh, fully loaded uh, tank. Exactly. You know? Get prepared. Treat us when you look at him at times, he's very open with his, his, his guard, isn't he? Yeah, and he, he pays for it when he does that too, as you saw, just saw there with that straight right. Blood to the nose. Tuss is feeling a little bit of it now. You can see he's starting to get a little bit tired. This is again what we said earlier, is uh, McCug is starting to take advantage of that. He seems to be uh, more relaxed at this point, at this stage. He actually seems to to be bent and scoring that right hand on uh, Tassis, and he's had some success in the last couple of rounds. And the spinning back kick there. Back kick. Both guys are obviously uh, rather composed, they're eh? pretty composed. Very composed. And, uh, you know, to be able to hit their opponents, uh, hit the, the other at will. Oh, oh. Good right hand. Well, right well with that right hand. Yes, that one set with Taggart back a little. It was a beautiful right hand. See, both men have been hurt. Another oh, there's another right hand coming in. Got McTaggart in trouble now. That's what he did. Well, look at that. <laughs> Once again, Tassis drops his hands and he comes that right hand straight back. Yeah. Nice left in the midsection. That's the end of round seven. Only one to go. Pete. Thank you for your commentary. Okay, He's thank gonna, you very Peter's much. He's going to go back and join Stan, the man, of course, in the dressing room, getting him ready for the main bout. You got it. Let me get ready for that main bout. Thank you, guys. Great to have you with us, Pete. Thank you very much indeed. Pete Cunningham, five times world lightweight champion. But joining us in the commentary position as Bob Jones comes back in, and we're seeing a replay of some of the action of that seventh round. And uh, certainly plenty of action going on with uh, Trevor McTaggart and Tassus Petridis doing battle. Petridis looking as though he has it fairly comfortably sewn up, but he can't afford to get loose because uh, McTaggart won't let him get away, as we see. As soon as he turns, Let's see what the got to say in the corner. As soon as he turns, ball, left hook, throw the right left hook. You haven't been throwing the left hook. Short left hooks. Pull him to this round, mate. Throw the left hook. Go on. Well, we're back with the final round now as we're ready to get underway and uh, McTaggart moves straight in with a couple of good kicks to start it all off. But Petridis comes back at him, but McTaggart really wanting to take the slight right up. He knows he's got to pull something out of the bag and he's trying hard. McTaggart coming in very strong. Yeah. OC, uh, another guest commentator joining us here, ex-boxer. Security man in Matthew, what do you think of this final round? Well, I tell you, actually, this Tosca guy, he started out very strong in the early rounds, but this other guy seems to be a well-seasoned boxer. He seems to be getting stronger instead of tiring out, that's whereas what, Tosca is tiring. We, that's what we were mentioning earlier about fitness and, the, and how important it is for the fighters to be in prime condition, because it's all very well to start out great and then to eat her out. But Tiger definitely seems to come back with a certain amount of strength in this last round. He certainly has, although this jump kick he keeps doing, it seems like just a token thing. He's really not landing the kick. 
But that, that's the funny thing about boxing as compared to kickboxing. Uh, I've never kickboxed myself. I've got a few guys work security for me that, that are kickboxers. But the fitness, the level of fitness is definitely superior to a conventional boxing in the States. Well, yeah, of course, using the hands and the legs takes a lot more energy. Of course, it's keep exactly. both working. Well, you've got, a, you've got a lot more to look out for, don't you? <laughs> That's for sure. And the Taggart going on the trail again after Katrina's. He's got plenty to do. He says that that was a bit low. Give me a, a little break. bit low on that one. Yeah, yes, I think passes. it was. I'm sure it's not intentional. But once again, the boys get tired. Those kicks start dropping. Certainly do. As you said, not intentional. It's just that they're so tired they can't get the leg up in the high. There's another one. Yes, I, I recently returned from Thailand, and I, I, I watched a lot of kickboxing when I was over there. And there's a difference, again, in the, in the, in the standard over there and the standard here. Over there, it's so, it seems like everything goes, anything goes. And as far as fighting out of the clinches, that's exactly what you have to do. They don't break them when they get in the Exactly. Over there. That's when they start using those knees. Use Absolutely. the knees. They lock behind the heads and use the knees. Oh, he's got the countdown towards the end of this title fight, the Australian light heavyweight title. McTaggart got to make it all or nothing right about now. And taking it up to Petritus. It's a slip, not a knockdown. Tussie's got to keep his hands up. Whoop, well, that's it. He's he's glad to hear the bell, man. Well, there it is. That's the bell for the final round. And we're going to have to wait on the judge's decision. Very important moment for these two boys. Petritus corner, obviously pretty happy with it. The way he's performed, they've all gathered there, waiting to hear now. Yes, there we go. Oh, I think it was the right decision. I think the right decision, yeah, going to Tarsus. If it had gone any other way, I think we would have had a riot in here. <laughs> Especially with the hometown crowd, certainly. <laughs> and now, coming up next, the USA heavyweight title over 10 rounds. The Australian stand the man Longanides from the red corner up against Charlie Mr. C. Archie fighting out of the blue corner. What a battle this will be. And coming into the stadium now, the fighters for the big one. The bout that is going to be an absolute sensation. You can see coming in firstly, Charlie Mr. C. Archie. And as he enters Festival Hall, he's got a plan for the way he wants tonight's fight to go. Still going maybe four or five rounds, but I'm hungry and I'm ready for Sam. He had been in the United States and he's been whooping the people I've been whooping. So I think it's really between me and him. And after this fight, I'm going to just show him in his home state that I'm bad and I'm take the belt back to the United States and fight for the world title because I'm ready. I'm hungry for it. Well, he's hungry for it, Bob Jones, but can he do it? Well, uh, he's got an impressive record. He's got a boxing record that goes back and spans years and years, something like 400 boxing fights. And uh, so Stan's a new young guy on the way up. And as I said, in the last 16 months, Stan's had 12 wins in the United States, nine of those being knockouts in the first or second round. So this guy, he'd better be tough. Otherwise, our own Melbourne Stan Longanitas is going to knock him right off his feet. Well, Stan Longanides, of course, is the man that uh, Charlie C. Archie has to do battle with. And by the sound of the stadium, Stan Longanides is now arriving, ready to do battle. Stan Longanides, the Australian. And boy, what a performer this guy must be. Aggression is uppermost in the mind of Stan Longanides. And tonight, he's ready to put that aggression to good use. Tonight, I'm going to knock Mr. C out. I've had a taste of success and I like it and I plan on keeping it for quite a while. Um, I've got some major sponsors now and there's no way I'm going to let them or myself or my family or anyone down. So tonight, Mr. C is like a stepping stone for me. Um, I'll be fighting the world champion early in 1990. So there's no way, there's no way Charlie's going to walk away with belt. Tonight, Charlie, I tell you, you're going down. Well, Stan Longanidi says Charlie's going down. Richard Norton. Will he put him down? I think he will. I think he will. I mean, one of the things Stan's got going, above anything, is the, the training he's had over in the Jet Center in Los Angeles. I mean, his training partners have been Mike Weaver, former WBA heavyweight champion, Michael Nunn, who was the IBF middleweight champ, Don the Dragon Wilson, who's a world light heavyweight champion, Pete Cunningham, of course, who we met earlier on, the Weaver triplets, which are Mike Weaver's brothers, they're all champions. They got Haglev prepared for Leonard and Hearn. 
So with that sort of sparring practice and those sort of training partners, boy, you, you can bet you're going to be ready. So this man is going in there very professionally prepared. Very professionally prepared. He's fit, he's fast, he's very flexible. As you just saw, he can do the splits in any direction, which for a heavyweight is unusual. Very fast hits, and he's got a wonderful left hook, which you'll see. Well, there's the tail of the tape with Charlie Viscosiachi on screen right now. He's 30 years of age, and that could be telling for him. Six foot, two inches tall, 176 centimeters. 91 kilograms and 200 pounds, he's a big man. He's had 24 wins for 14 KOs and two losses, and is rated number three in the world. He comes out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, but rated number three in the world. Richard, he must have some ability. <laughs> he must have. As I said, he's known for having the most devastating body punches in the sport. That's part of his tactic. From round one, he's in there, and he's going to try and rip Stan in the body. And, uh, well, we'll see. Stan, of course, is a quick starter. I mean, he gets the job done. He's got great balance, flexibility, and uh, I think he's just going to be a little bit too fast. Well, there's an absolutely packed crowd here in Melbourne's Festival Hall to be, see this most important bout, and there's no doubt they're in for a great fight. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape of Stan the Man Longanides. Just 24 years of age. Five foot ten inches tall, a lot shorter than his opponent, and weighing in at uh, 202 pounds, he's a solid lad. He's had 12 wins and nine KOs, and undefeated. It's, it's it's number one in the world, he's the Australian champion and the USA champion. Interestingly, in the, Austra in the United States, he's introduced as Thunder from Down Under. Great pictures of Charlie C. Archie there for the playing of the national anthem of the United States of America. Uh, introducing in the red corner from Albuquerque, New Mexico, as an amateur boxer, five times Golden Glove champion of the United States, 489 amateur contests, 480 wins. At 28 years of age, he's had 28 kickboxing bouts, 22 wins, 18 KOs. They call him Mr. C, Charlie Ciacci. Yeah. In the white corner, unbeaten, 12, 12, nine KOs. He had to gain national acclaim by going to the United States, winning the US and North American heavyweight championship. With Pete Cunningham in the corner, from Taylor's Lakes. He won the title in over Bernard Letty. Would you welcome Stan the Man Lachinello! <laughs> to win the United States and North American Championship belt. Your third man, Dave Hedgecock Sr. Junior. Terrific. Okay, well, the crowd getting restless as we uh, have the boxes taped and ready to go, but they're called in now to uh, get their instructions from the referee, Dave Hedgecock. Okay, my best man win. Okay, so there they go. The crowd the already getting warmed up for this one. Certainly are. Round number one coming up right now.
And it's the big one, ladies and gentlemen, the one we've really been looking forward to bringing to you, the USA heavyweight title between Stan the Man Longanides and Charlie Mr. C. Archie from the United States of America. And they're called in, and here we go with the action. Take it away, Bob Jones. Well, it's the opening round, and it's going to be interesting if this going with continues with Stan's record of a first or second round knockout. And I'm sure Charlie Siach is aware of that, and he's going to probably be on the defensive move over the first couple of rounds just to feel his way so he doesn't become a knockout statistic of Stan Longinides. Will Stan go for that early knockout? I'm reasonably sure he will. We'll see. It, you know, it's, it's the way his knockouts have been in the past. I'm not sure why he particularly changed now. Well, moving in and uh, taking all of the fight up in the early stages to Mr. C. Mr. C always is very aggressive, of course. He's always going to be in there. With both fighters obviously feeling each other out in the uh, beginning stage of this first round. I just don't like the way Stan's fighting to a very low hands. He's uh, being a little bit too cocky, which is not a smart move against an experienced seasoned fighter like Charlie C. Archie. Yeah, when you look at 480 bouts under the belt uh, of, of regulation boxing, you don't drop your hands to guys like that, surely. That's right. And understand very effective leg kicker. It's very fast with that leg. Very flexible and gets those legs up high to the head very easily, as you just saw. Stan just scored with a very nice roundhouse left kick right on the point of the jaw. Charlie Siachi acknowledged. Didn't have a lot of power, but it was right there. Oh, that hurt. damaging right leg kick. You obviously saw the effect on Charlie C there. This is the reason Stan's been knocking everybody out. He's got the coordination now, combinations from leg to... Oh, that's why he's being so smart with the hands down. He knows he's got this nice, nice, nice bobbing and weaving. Yeah. I mean, he's really in control there. He knows that jab he throws out. Nice flicking jab, very fast. Nice switch there. Fake low, high round kick. Hey, this guy is quick, isn't he? He's very quick. This is a heavyweight you're watching. Yeah. Very much in control. Stan's putting on a bit of a show. I didn't expect that. I thought he would have come out in powerhouse, but he's doing those karate flick kicks as a bit of a show. I thought maybe win the crowd over a bit. Maybe this round he'll come out and put the pressure right on. Well, the first round, and he's done it in fine style, no doubt about that. Charlie Archie has some unusual methods to prepare for tonight's fight. Well, I've been running back home hills. I've been running in the sand. I run three to four miles. And I've just been really working hard and boxing at the boxing gym and doing leg kicks in the morning. So I'm really ready to fight. I've been really hitting it hard and my bones are ready. So I'm going to be cutting up some legs. Well, them's hard bones all right, aren't they? They sure are <laughs> hard bones. It's interesting to note that... Uh, Charlie was scheduled to fight the present uh, world champion, Dennis Alexi, on two occasions. Both times, uh, Dennis somehow switched <laughs> opponents two weeks before the fight. So maybe the look was a bit intimidating even for uh, Dennis. He's also been hiding from Stan a bit too. Stan's been after Dennis. I don't know whether he's come through so quick that they're ignoring to fight him because he's had so many wins in such a short period of time. But surely nine wins by knockout gives him the right to start challenging Dennis Alexi. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure that's what they're banking on. All right, here we are in the center of the ring, ready for the start of round two. Will we get the aggression? Stan attempting a spinning wheel kick. Nice fast jab though from Stan. Oh, very effective leg kick. And then spinning Archie back on. Already it takes its toll. You can see the weight. Nice countering leg kick from Archie. Stan just a little bit too quick on his feet. Now, the, there has been a fairly well-kept secret around town. There's a bit of a whisper around that, that Stan has, in fact, gone into the fight tonight with an injury. Is that right? I think he's got an in, inside left leg torn hamstring. Torn hamstring, really. So if he, if he takes a kick on the inside of that forward leg, it's, I'm surprised he's fighting orthodox. I thought he would have fought southpaw, get that leg back and protect it. But uh, his timing's pretty good right now. Charlie Archie's having a hard time catching Stan. And that hamstring will be under some strain with the kicking, too. Stan was a bit worried about that all week, of course, and he was trying to shield, especially with the demonstration fight uh, sparring he's been doing. But uh, he was deciding he wanted to keep it all for this night, and uh, he's obviously letting it go right now. Well, let's hope it holds up, because we're going to see a great exhibition of uh, kickboxing. It would be a shame to see that go wrong. It certainly would. 
Need to fight a go for the inside leg kick. I thought he would have taken advantage of that. Stands going that outside with the left hook coming up. But so far, I thought Stan would have been using that switch kick, which didn't take advantage of that inside front leg kick. His favourite one is that switch kick, followed up with that hook, which I'm sure you're going to see. This is the very he comes down. He's starting to go to town now. <laughs> Touch a little bit low. Stan moving in now. He's going to start landing those heavy yeah. punches. There he goes down. Well, we saw that devastating kick in the first round, and he's followed it up beautifully now. You can see it, that leg, and just towels on those legs, especially when you've got somebody with the legs the size of Stan plummeting down on you. Yeah, well, there you go, and at the end of uh, round two, boy, some uh, rough and tough stuff, and already Stan looking good. And Stan looking good. As I said, the weight of those legs makes so much of a difference with the power you can put in those leg kicks, and uh, even though uh, Archie obviously has a height advantage, Stan can, just knows how to get inside, He's got wonderful bobs and weaves, and he's very light on his feet. Well, here we are seeing some of the action in replay now. Nice and winning heel kick. And good punches, too. Now there's Archie. There it is. Goes down. All right, so what's Archie got to think now? What's he got to do? Stay away. Archie, yeah, Archie's <laughs> got to stay. He's got to watch out for that leg. He's got to start checking. As I said, one of the main things you have to do is check those leg kicks. If you don't, you start taking the punishment like he is. It's not very long before you can't put any weight on it. And uh, Archie's already going to start favoring, and that does amazing things to your brain when you're trying to think about winning a fight, and you're thinking, whoa, I don't want to cop another kick in that leg. And uh, that's going to really upset his game plan a lot. So immediately he's got to be conscious of his defensive skills with his legs. Most definitely. I think really what's with me, misleading with Stan Logan is what you were saying earlier, Richard. His kicks are not looking that strong tonight, but with his body weight, he's so heavy in the thighs, and his shins are so hard. Both of these fighters have got very hard shins. So yeah, the kicks don't look strong, but they're rocking in and really shocking the nervous system. It's supposed, supposedly relaxed kicks that hurt the most. The, the stiffer you try and kick, and often trying to put too much power in, it can actually slow the effect of the kick down. Ooh, Charlie's going in with a, a left-right combination, but still getting hit on that leg. Stan's just Stan moving in now with a right combination. <laughs> Archie in big trouble now, trying to come out of it. Stan going to town, working that leg, really hurting that leg. That's his favourite one, coming with that right leg round kick, followed in with that left hook. Overhand right. There it goes again, combination that leg kick, followed with that left hook and that overhand right. Another left hook. Leg kick again, Archie's got to look after that leg, but it's already hurting too much. Stan coming in again, trying to plant that hook and that overhand right, once again coming over. Notice Archie having a lot of trouble putting weight on that left leg. Oops, scoring with a cut there. Got those body shots coming Trying to get those body shots in. Up a cut then on Stan. Oh, there it is. Ah, that will be it. That'll be the ball game. That'll be the one. Archie will be up, but if he is, it's not going to be for very long. Archie doesn't want to know about it. That's it. The crowd going crazy. Stan standing again. The party's over. There it is. Stan Longanides. Going crazy, they love it. Wow, what a Charlie's performance! Charlie's still down on the ground, still not able to get to his feet. Well, if you wanted to see a pal packed performance, that's what you've got tonight. There it is, a shot of Mr. C not looking too happy in that corner. For the corner, he's still sitting on the ground. It, it looks like he's sitting on his chair, but he's actually still on the canvas. Well, he came here hungry, he won't want to eat for days. Stan, can we get a word with you? Congratulations, what an outstanding performance, sensational. How do you feel? Thank you. I'm on top of the world, more than anything, because it was a big turnout for me. Yeah. And I hope I didn't let anybody down. You certainly didn't let anybody down. Now, you probably started a little slower than a lot of people expected. Yeah. We do know that you've had an injury during the week. Was that affecting you? Yes, that's, that's true. I got a torn hamstring. I tried not to let anyone know about it, but I was on the back of my mind, and 10 rounds is a long way to go. And Charlie's normally a fast starter, so if he took anything out of me, it would have been a bit of a concern for me. And he, he certainly started coming back at you with a bit of boxing. Did you feel then you had to finish yeah, it straight away? Yes, he did. I, ha I thought I had him hurt in the second round, and I, I guess I let him get away with it. As soon as I had him hurt in the third, I knew I had to make the most and capitalise on it, because this guy's the type of fighter, you don't want to give him any chances. Well, your reputation's been absolutely superb with what you've done in the United States. You wanted to do it when you got back here to Australia. Tonight, you must feel a very happy man. Yes, I am. I'm very happy. Well, here it is, the final moments of the bout as we see Stan Longanides moving in to Charlie Ciarchi.
And he's given him a hiding right up until now. And that one doesn't do Charlie C. Archie any good at all as he goes to the canvas and stays there. And Stan the Man, Longanides, gets that win that he's so much wanted within Australia. A great performance from him and a great performance tonight in all of the kickboxing here at Melbourne's Festival Hall. We hope you've enjoyed the program. I'm Ken Hose.